Welcome to opening night. On tonight's show, the divine Lisa Chapel, who started in Gloss, went on to McLeod's, and pretty much hasn't stopped working ever since. Then, the best thing to happen to children each holidays. Tim Bray talks about his incredibly successful children's theatre company. Hi and welcome to opening night, your go-to half hour for all things theatre, performing arts or in fact anything with an opening night. My first guest tonight needs no introduction, but because I like the sound of my own voice, I'll give her one. I've had the chance of working with Lisa Chapel twice now, firstly in Roger Hall's Social Climbers and then in The Pink Hammer, both for Tadpole Productions. Her brief for today was to tell you how fabulous it was getting the chance to work with me. But she said she wasn't prepared to lie. So here she is. Welcome, Lisa Chapel. <laughs> Hi, Lou. Hi. <laughs> we did I, have fun, though, didn't we? We had so much fun, and I love working with you. Of course you do. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> Ducky. <laughs> what a fantastic career you've had. Yeah. And are having, still. I have actually just got that because I'm going through all my old boxes from mum and dad's garage and it's got literally every show I've ever done. The program, press, photographs, cards from people in the show mm. and I really am lucky. I've yeah. had an amazing career. What's been the highlight do you think? What defines you in people's minds? Oh they're different things. So what defines me in people's minds is Claire from McLeod's Daughters mm -hmm. and Chelsea from Gloss. And a highlight for me was um, the show I've just done, That Bloody Woman, ah. at Centre Point Theatre. It was an, my own personal Everest. Well, we'll get on to that. But um, Gloss, you were, you were a baby, weren't you? Weren't you only about 16? Was. Yeah, I think I auditioned at 16 and started work at 17. Wow. What happened yeah. to school? Well, I'd finished school. <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, I'd managed to... Yeah, I just left once you could leave. Right. Because I knew what I wanted to do. I yeah. wanted to act. Mm. Mm. And, of course, the, the beauty of all that is that uh, you, you were working with Janice Finn on Gloss and you still get to work with her now. I know. It's just lovely. How long were you in Gloss for? We did three seasons. Mm. And we did quite long seasons. We shot between three to six months of the year. And then tell me how the McLeod's Daughter things came about. Did you get cast from here or did you go over to Australia to find your fortune? Uh, no, I actually went over to Australia to study. Ah. So I'd been working for 11 years um, in New Zealand and doing theatre and film and television. And I decided uh, I was doing a play down in the court. And I remember Albert Cooper saying, you're not on television now, darling. You're all in Guatemala quite, now. Yes, oh, that, that comes later. <laughs> um, and he was just... You know, he really was a bit rough on me. I love him, but mm. he was a bit rough. I, I hear he's a bit rough on a few yeah, people. Yeah, <laughs> and I just thought, I'm not speaking up for myself because I'm not feeling qualified. So oh, I thought, okay. well, go qualify yourself. And that way, you know, that situation won't happen again. So I went to drama school. Um, my partner at the time had studied with Dean Carey, yes. who runs the Actors Centre, and he said, you'll love him. So I went to do the one-year course and sent my audition in. And he said, since you're going to stop your career for a year. We've decided to make it worth your while. We've been, we've been wanting to make it a two-year course. And so it's now a two-year course. I mean, ah, mm. oh, that's a bit different, isn't mm. it? But <laughs> I loved it. And every time I go see a school show at The Journey, I just want to leap back on stage and do the whole course all over again. Um, but my intention was to start a theatre company, which I did, with two of my friends from drama school. And, uh, and then this audition for McLeod's came up, and I thought it was a guest role. Because uh, my friend Laurie, who I did City Life with, had been on hold for Claire for four months. Mm. So I thought, oh, that's cool. I'll be able to A, earn some money since we're doing, you know, our own theatre. No money in that. Um, and B, go see Laurie. So I did this audition and got a recall. And it was in the recall I realised it was for Claire. So I've Brilliant. been apologising to Laurie ever since. Yes. She, she'd be a bit hacked off with you, I'd imagine. Well, she's such a nice woman. I'd and be hacked off with you. I know. You yeah. wouldn't speak to me for the rest no, of, I wouldn't. of your life. <laughs> you would be so dead to but, me. But, yeah, but Lozzie's got a very big heart. <laughs> and she went on to do an amazing role, which was um, a favourite in Australia on Home and Away. Oh, okay. She played a really amazing villain in it. And she was voted the best villain on Australian oh, television. Fair. So, okay. Yeah. Did you know how to ride a horse? No. Because I, I saw a picture of you riding a horse. You looked legit. 
There were You're times. So, so a real angle and going around a corner. I'm, and that's my favourite picture. That I know is exactly fab. exactly the one. That, yeah. That was in a round yard. It's and really good. I know. That was the one time that even when we, were, we got sent up, Bridie and I, I said I couldn't ride. I said I'd fallen off a horse. Um, but I hadn't actually ridden it for very long before it tossed me. Um, so they sent us up for like a week's training, Bridie and I. And when we went back there about a year and a half later for Aaron's wedding, which was in the same area, um, the guy who trained me, Jim, uh, said to me, oh, that show of yours, you know, for him it was like just babes on horses and mm. boys and he thought it was a joke. But he said, oh, but that bit in the round yard was all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Absolutely, that must have made you feel great. It and did. of course, two-time Logie winner. I hate you for that too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I'm too scared to work with you again now. Now that I know the truth's coming out. I mean, Logies are great because they're not your peers, they're the public. So that's what really matters, of course. Well, it, it's lovely that you've made a difference. Yeah. You know, that you've got into people's hearts. And McLeod certainly did that. Like, I'm off to do another fan meet and greet in Australia in a couple of weeks. Great. Um, and it's. It's really, I'm doing dry July at the moment and I noticed um, a what fan. What is wrong with you, Lisa? Oh, I'm trying to raise money for cancer. Oh, okay. And I'm doing plastic free July. Oh. Honestly, it's, it's like I don't know what to do at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the fans are so loyal and yeah. they, they kind of pass the box sets on down through the generations. So at these fan meet and greets, you can have literally little ones right up to the grandmothers and they... They all know the show and it's sweet. It oh, is that, sweet. That's great. Um, so you said that your your sort of epiphany um, was that bloody woman. Well, yeah, I've always had a fear of singing in public, even though musicals is how I started it at school. Um, and I love singing. What was the fear? That you would forget the words or you're off key or what? Just that I wasn't a very good singer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> that basic, huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And I'd get very nervous for singing, not so much for yeah, acting. I used to turn my voice like Yeah, that. And, and it just gra it grabs your diaphragm, it yeah. grabs your knees, all your support goes, mm. it tightens everything. It's just so difficult to make <laughs> a sound. It tightens. Everything yeah. tightens. Um, <laughs> in all the wrong places. So it was um, for me doing a rock musical. Um, because I yes I have written an album and I did tour it and I did I did sing it but it was all kind of folk music you mm. know it was all country soft singing it wasn't there was about three notes in the whole album so doing this big rock range and having to belt and and sing sixteen songs playing um, a suffragette playing Kate Shepherd yeah. who got us the vote a suffragette um, the suffragette the woman mm. who changed the world no yeah. pressure yeah uh, and yeah it was a and you loved it I loved it I absolutely loved it I loved so you would do another rock musical now you know you can do it I'm yeah well I'm doing my next job after the next job is Shortland Street the musical mm. so that'll be fun all right well let's jump ahead after the next job and I hate you now even more because <laughs> you've got to leave jobs <laughs> So Shortland Street the musical, you're doing that. Yes, and I get to sing the iconic song, You're Not in Guatemala Now, Dr. Ropata. <laughs> that will be brilliant. That's basically the why audience, I said yes to yeah, the job. <laughs> totally, the audience will love that and you'll um, steal the, you know, every scene. Fantastic. Well, I'm hardly in it, but I get to do the best lines, so yeah. that's good. Well, I still remember you um, in The Wizard of Oz. That's the White Witch, was it? And you stole it there too. <laughs> that was great. Oh, uh, I played her like she sort was stone Monroe. Sort um, of on. It's very stoned Marilyn. Yeah. On roller skates. <laughs> it was yeah. really good. <laughs> um, well, we will revisit Shortland Street the Musical, but Bright Star. Now Bright tell me Star. about that. So Bright Star is a really exciting project for me because I get to work with Paul Gittins again as a director. And I worked with him about, oh, 15, I can't remember, it's all so long now. Yeah. Um, but he's an amazing director and he got really great work out of me for the homecoming. So when he approached me for this, I was really excited and then I heard about the part and I was not excited. Um, not Why? because I wasn't. Why? Not what because is the I, part? Well, so the part is, um, it's about Beatrice, Beatrice Tinsley, who's an astronomer, who discovered this amazing 
she discovered I haven't started doing it. Doesn't a play. matter. She discovered something. Yeah. But yes, I'm really getting into character because my my friend my character. Just as long as by opening night you sort of know what she discovered. <laughs> that'd be quite she helpful. She discovered. I just say dark yeah. matter stars. I don't know. I'm not something. playing her. No. She she has to do all the research on that. <laughs> I'm playing her best friend who knows oh. nothing about stars. Okay. And um, so that is typecasting. Um, and she's kind of the opposite to Kate Shepard and Beatrice. Um, she just sacrifices her life for her children and for keeping up appearances and staying in a bad marriage. Oh dear. And it's, it's just the antithesis of how I've lived my life and yeah. who I am. Mm. So it's going to be a really great challenge and I'm looking, really looking forward to it. Stuart Hall's written it and it's funny. So it's not just about, you know, stuff I don't understand. It's actually really funny and it's got really great complex relationships in it. Where is it on and when? Don't you do your research? <laughs> oh, bloody I'm hell, she makes me hey, do all the no, work. No, it's up to you to push I've it. I've got like three jobs before that. She doesn't know. She doesn't no, know no, when no. it's on or where it's I on. I do, I do. It's on at the Herald and it's on in September. Just don't <laughs> ask me the exact date. Google it. <laughs> I should have done that. <laughs> Hey, so lovely talking to you. Lovely to talk to you. And, uh, we'll see you at the next Tadpole production. Of course, of course we will. I'm going to send you one of my plays. Do? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is there a role for me in it? Yeah. <laughs> there is now. <laughs> I'll yeah. just go home and write that weenie. in. Yeah. yeah. Second tree on the left. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. Bye, darling. Thank you. for those of you lucky things heading overseas in the heat of the northern summer. What's hot on Broadway? Well, if you haven't seen Hamilton, it is still running, but it is also on at the West End, so you may catch it there. No doubt it'll edge its way to Sydney or Melbourne before too long. Widely judged as the greatest American musical in decades, Lin-Manuel Miranda has created a bio-musical about an orphan immigrant from the Caribbean who came to New York and served under George Washington, defended the Constitution, founded the Treasury and the New York Post, had an affair and got killed in a duel. Busy. Bruce Springsteen is playing a two-hour solo musical about himself called Springsteen on Broadway until December. He performs dressed in black with no band and his wife joins him for two duets. Apparently it's fantastic. Pared down capella style renditions of his hits like Born to Run, Dancing in the Dark and Born in the USA. Fab. The band's visit stole the show at this year's Tony Awards. It's adapted from a 2007 Israeli film and it's described as bittersweet and different from most modern musicals but full of beautiful moments and is also seen as unconventionally wise. You also can't go past the revival of Angels in America and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Both won awards this year and are in the top 10 picks of theatre in New York this summer. Angels is back on Broadway for the first time since its 1993 premiere and to see it in a single day with multiple intermissions and a dinner break takes 10 hours. It's described as a play that breaks and fills your heart and one that inspires you as it takes your breath away and it stars the amazing Andrew Garfield. 
Harry Potter is apparently a triumph which combines grand storytelling with unbelievable stagecraft and it has supposedly cost 68 million US dollars. If there's one name that screams children's theatre in Auckland, it is Tim Bray's. Every school holidays and in between, you can hear the squeals of delight from hundreds of school kids as they descend on the Pump House Theatre in Takapuna and others. And his is a huge theatrical success story. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Lou. I can't believe that yesterday was the first time that I ever met you. I think I met you once previously at a function with your... <laughs> With Scott. Oh, really? I think. Oh, in the Long dim, dark, ago, ghastly yeah. days when he was in advertising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, it is amazing because your shows often follow ours, so it is amazing that we've never actually intersected. So. I know. It's it's sort of at the pump house. It's a weird thing. It's like um, sort of being left, let in and out of prison. That you, sort of, <laughs> you know, you, you, you get out of your cell and the new one moves in sort of thing. Yeah. But you must love kids. I do, yeah. I do, I do, yeah. I could tell um, by when I saw you yesterday, you have a fantastic rapport with them. Thank you. Um, my f I was I studied drama with Mary Amor at the Auckland New Theatre as a teenager, and my f I went to university to do a science degree, which I got. But my first job out of university was performing to school, performing in schools with Mary Amor's Auckland New Theatre, mm. and that was that was the the switch. I just went. I love this. I love being in front of children, performing to them, um, making them laugh. You know, all that sort of stuff. And basically, that was my tra tra trajectory for the career. So you haven't had a day job, so to speak. No. What all your life you've been involved in theatre. Yeah, That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So um, there was a point where I, I went into marketing for a while. They're, sorry, I'm telling you. Um, uh, that closed after a while, that performing schools job, so I started um, finding work, office work, so th that lasted about a year until the, the call of theatre. And who know. wants to be in an office? Mm, yeah, oh, so yeah. boring. Although ironically, I'm in the office most of the time now, oh. doing funding applications. That's <laughs> oh. the irony, it's complete <laughs> irony, you're in theatre, but I spend a lot of time Admin. behind the computer raising money for, t for what we do. Well, you have to, I mean, you yeah. have to get funding, yeah. because uh, otherwise it just all falls yeah, on yeah, you, absolutely. doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, we know all about that. <laughs> uh, how long has Tim Bray um, Productions been going for? I started the company in 1991. Yeah. The Auckland New Theatre closed, which was at the, it's where the basement theatre now is in Lower Grey's Ave. Yes. And so this, this two-storey premises was sitting there and I thought, I'm 27, I'll just take over the theatre company. You know, set up a theatre company, started producing theatre for children and adults. In fact, Lisa Chappell was one in one of a, a cabaret that I created called The Nice Show in 92. Um, and she has got a fabulous voice. Um, and... So that's how it started, really. It was just that this, this, this young, naive energy going, I'm going to set up a company and off we go. It was called the Central Theatre back then. Um, and in 2004, my brother, who's a marketing consultant, was gearing me around what to do. So he said, put your name on it. You're an actor. You're the driving force behind all this. And I was going, but there's so many other people. He said, you're the driving force. Mm. Put your name on it. And I sort of, you know, did. Yeah. So, so tell me about the structure of it. How many shows a year do you do and where do you do them? Sure. It, we're a cha registered charitable trust, um, so that's the sort of the grounding uh, foundation of us. We typically do four shows a year. Um, occasionally we might tour one, like this year, we're, the show we're doing right now goes on tour to Northland after the pump house season. Uh, last year we took the Whale Rider to Capital E's National Festival. So, you know, typically we do four shows a year, but sometimes there are other things, that, opportunities that come along. But mainly based at the Pump House. Mainly based at the Pump House. We love its intimacy. The ch it's really a great venue for children. Fantastic. It's great seating for children. They feel really close, close to the action. You've got Lake Papuke there, which is beautiful. Mm. You know, free parking. There's a lot of pluses to being in a suburban venue. Totally. Yeah. And are they always New Zealand stories? Mainly. Most of our work is based on New Zealand literature. But of course, there's a wealth of international stuff too. So we've just done Pippi Longstocking, we've done The Twits, we've done uh, The Wind in the Willows as an outdoor production at the, just going around the lake in the pump house. Um, so we do do the internationals, but actually New Zealand stuff we've learnt or you know found that actually Kiwis want those stories. They love their own stories. So, and, uh, Margaret Mahi, for example, you know her stories make up 10% of our 27-year repertoire. So mm. it's, it's amazing when you actually go back and see what you've done and what actually works. Well, you must be one of the few avenues for kids to actually uh, fall in love with literature. You know, there's so much looking at iPads and phones yeah. and stuff, even for little kids. 
but to A, experience live theatre, be involved in it, and also get to know New Zealand literature and foreign literature yeah. is a great um, grounding for kids, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, what we find is that we've, we've heard that um, book sales of a particular book that we're doing just go through the roof in Auckland. Mm. Um, you should and also, get a cut. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, you know, the books that we're doing the show on, you can't get them out of the library. So obviously our audience is reading them. Um, I mean, we do sell the books at the pump house, so it's one of those things too. Yeah, they go out the door because suddenly the, 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 we've got a, a stage show based on a, on a book, and, and so children want to delve back into that world to find out sort of the inspiration for, for what they've just seen. And as far as the actor goes, the actors go, is it amateur, semi-professional, professional? I mean, Completely do, do professional, they, Okay, yes. so they, everybody gets paid? Yeah, even the ushers get paid. Oh, we Brilliant. have volunteer ushers, but we, you know, all our front of house staff and back staff and all that, everybody's paid. So okay. it's a big, they're hundreds or $130,000 productions. So wow. big costing productions. And, and so that's all funded? No, 55% uh, of our income is box office and youth theatre. We have a youth theatre program where children come for drama classes. The rest, we start with zero dollars at the beginning of each year and Gail oh, Rotherham. I know that feeling with our theatre company. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we just apply for funding where we can. So yes. we piecemeal but get, to the, you know, get what we can. Um, we had a tough year last year box office wise and also funding wise. So we're developing a patrons program going to our audience members and people mm. we know to go, can you support us on a, on a monthly program of donations because we're just finding that this hit and miss is a scary roller coaster ride. Um, we don't know how the funding's going to go and if you don't get it, you're sort of really, it's a scary ride. Well, it's a pity you can't get funding from the education department, isn't it? Because, yes. Because, I mean, look yeah. at the education that you're supplying kids. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we'd love to be annually funded too, but we're not. So it is this piecemeal scrabble together what you can. And um, When you're thinking about what you're going to um, produce and show, what is the magic ingredient? What, what do kids want? And the sort of show, t you know, what's your formula? I think uh, on stage, truthfulness from our actors. Mm -hmm. I think that they, uh, if they play emotions that are true and real for their character, um, I mean, we've had 12-year-old boys leave the whale rider in tears because they've been taken on this beautiful journey. Fantastic. Um, we get adults who cry in some of the scenes because, again, too, yes, they're, they're enjoyable and fun and all that sort of stuff, but I don't shy away from that side of our stories or, yeah, we, we go fully into a journey. Um, and so, and we go through the same time of design, craft, mm. rehearsals that an adult theatre company will. Um, we have a choreographer that comes in, Linda McFetridge, so she will work on, the, on that. If we have makeup, we need makeup designs. We've got costume designers, set designers, lighting designers. So there's all, all these professionals that are coming together to work on a children's show, but we do it as if it's an adult show. Mm. It's the same process. Fantastic. And we try and bring the same craft, quality, care that you would for an adult show. Children are hugely intelligent and they deserve top quality stuff. Well, yeah. you're not talking down to them, no, are you? No, so that, no, no, no. that's probably the, yeah. the secret to it. Just take me through what was happening yesterday when I went to the pump house, because it was so wonderful, though, those kids that turned up and they were um, uh, visually impaired, weren't yeah. they? Um, since 2004, we've been doing sign language interpretive performance. So I think we were the first theatre company in New Zealand to offer that. So they happen every show. But in 2015, we started doing audio described performances for blind and visually impaired children. And um, so what you saw was the children come an hour before the show starts for a touch tour. Um, and so our stage manager, Katie, will put all the props and things out. And so the children get a chance to get to know what's happening in the show. And then they also touch the set, any set pieces. The actors then come down and introduce themselves in a costume. That if there's a funny costume or an unusual costume, the children get to feel that. Mm. They get to hear the different voices the actors use. Then they're fitted with an earpiece. And so uh, Kevin, who's our audio describer, has written his own script, which describes what happens on the stage while the children are listening to the dialogue. Some children have got a bit of vision, but there are blind children that come. So they're fed the movement on stage, what the emotion on the face is, um, what the lighting might be happening, the mood of the characters and things like that, all the things that can't be seen. Wow, it's, it's that a, it's is a fantastic. It's a hugely moving and great experience. Mm. Uh, we have blind adults that come, thank you very much, who they come the day before and they listen to Kevin's script and they feed back to him 
where he could do better or okay. what's good so that by the time we get to do it for the children, um, you know, we've, we've got this really great little script that's fed around our script in a sense. And for these children to be actually being introduced to theatre and social experiences that these blind adults that come probably never had. No as children, so therefore they're, they're encouraging them into the world and finding new experiences that hopefully they'll continue to have as adults. I could see the looks on their faces yesterday, they were so excited and just the, the colour and they were so sweet, yeah. it was just really, really lovely. Yeah. The first time we did in 2015, the children were very tentative. Yeah. And then now they know that they come every holiday. Oh, they couldn't we, wait they to get up on, on stage. So they were there, heading in, in that there. direction. Absolutely. Mm, yeah, no. Fantastic. Well, you are making a fantastic contribution, Thank not you. only to theatre, but to society as a whole and to children. Thank so you. good on you. Thank you. Nice to see you. You too. Thanks, Lou. Finally tonight, let me tell you about an amazing theatrical experience we had on Saturday night when we went to the Contours of Heaven at the Basement Theatre. This one-woman show is performed by Anna Chaya Scotney, who stole the show in the Breaker Uppers as the agro young wahini who wouldn't take crap from anybody. The contours of heaven couldn't be more different. It combines vocal harmonies and movement and superb acting as Anna portrays the hopes and fears of six different young people from the Hawke's Bay. Suicide is a pervading theme and it is both moving and alarming how many in the audience got up afterward to say how they could identify with the message. Believe me, Anna Chaskotney has a huge future and she needs to be applauded for tackling the disturbing and tragic theme of youth suicide. That's it for tonight. See you next week. Goodbye.